someone needs a blanket or a pillow or something, uh, I do. I mean, the lunch was really good. Um, so just to finish the interesting fact about translating the Ninja Turtles game back. That, that, that uh, fun fact, uh, the way how I tried to translate was actually just switch the keyboard from English to Serbian. So like if you have a W that was a nye or things like that. Um, yeah, it never worked. Um, so, okay, uh, talking about the Docker. Uh, Blue Whale, I had to put a disclaimer at one point when I tested this talk in the office because one of the guys asked me like are you aware there was like a weird game that was popular in social networks last year called the blue whale so no only geeky stuff no nothing other than, than that um, how many of you is familiar with the docker okay how many will work with you work daily with docker Okay, that's that's not so bad. Um, how many of you thought Docker was the same thing as Vagrant when it started working with it? I mean, I did so. Okay. Um, first big difference. Um, difference between Vagrant or any kind of virtual virtualization compared to content mutation, right? That's like really hard word. Um, so let's say on the left side here you can see basically how uh, virtualization will work when you want to run, let's say you, you have uh, three exactly same applications that you want to run in Docker environment and you want to run them in VM environment. Uh, in VM, of course, you have your infrastructure, that's basically the same in both cases. Hosting operating system, again, you will need to have some system that will run. And then we come to the first difference. We have a hypervisor when it comes to virtualization and we have Docker engine that will do the rest in this case. Uh, as you can notice, we have like huge boxes and I intentionally put them this big, uh, guest OS. It takes memory, it takes storage, and there are few more important things that you can't really uh, optimize properly uh, when using VM compared to Docker or, or any uh, container-based system at all. Um, another big thing, and uh, this is actually how we are doing it in our company, that is we are running VMs on KVM, and on every KVM, we have a bunch of Docker containers, different Docker containers. So currently we are running like 12 or 15 different microservices and the goal is to reach to a fully scalable uh, system that you can configure in real time, selecting only images you want to be provisioned on your machine. So instead of installing a package or something, you can just pick what microservice you want to run because Docker actually allows us to make things work like that. We only configure Docker, we build applications like they are all connected. <coughs> Sorry. Of course, we'll have some kind of dependencies. If you install application C, you need to have application A or something like that. Um, but in general, uh, we, we did it in a slightly different way than it was, it was usual before. Um, one big thing, one, actually one big difference uh, when we talk about VM or Docker, or for me Docker over VM, is how it manages resources. If you want to run a virtual machine, like I give an example here, um, with one gig of RAM and one core, you will use 10 gigs of RAM and 10 cores with VMs. While on the Docker side, you can say, I want to allow this machine to go up to one gigabit, gigabit of RAM and one core. It will not go over. Uh, that means in a bunch of scenarios where you don't actually utilize the most of your memory and most of your CPU, 
your machine will somewhere be idling during that time. While with VM, you can't use the rest of the resources that are not there. They are they're just locked and or you can try to do it, but I, I honestly don't don't suggest to try something like that because most likely you will run your uh, whole VM host down because it will run out of memory or, or something like that. Um, next thing that's really important is how to deal with the data that you have on your Docker machine. Uh, let's take a scenario where you want to run WordPress, but you want to have access from those files on your local machine. So not that you have to go into your VM, then from VM, uh, there is no really SSH for Docker, but you can access the shell of every container and then see the listing of files. You can move that all the way up to a mounted or shared folder that will be visible to your host operating system, similar like VM does it where when, when you configure your share points. But also, it can keep files locally. For example, if you are doing any kind of caching or uh, session files or whatever that's related to that particular container, it stays inside. You don't have to publish it outside for other machines or other people to see. It brings on, on security level, but we will we'll touch that a little bit later. Um, also, there is really good thing about networking when it comes to Docker. Uh, with VM, you will have to create your own network, to design your own network, to assign IP addresses, or if you use NAT, then you will have different kind of problems. Here, uh, you can name your machines. Let's say you have machine A, machine B, machine C. If you, and both those machines have Nginx installed, and they are exposing port 80 publicly. Publicly for, for that uh, container uh, host. You can just use HTTP machine A or HTTP machine B from inside and access those machines because the whole networking layer on Docker is something that was actually designed uh, for, for that to help you not waste time working on your network configurations more time than you will actually spend working on your application that you want to run, or applications. Like uh, anything else, we here also have the CLI commands. Uh, yeah, all starts with Docker, a uh, bunch of them really. This is just an example and we will see this a little bit later how you can set up a simple WordPress installation in Docker expo on your local machine and run it in, well, basically milliseconds if we don't take the time needed for download those images. Um, also like, let's say Vagrant, uh, Docker supports configuration files where you can set your commands that you want to run to set up every environment in exactly the same way. Uh, it's basically automation that's already built in and it will allow you to run containers in such fashion that let's say you want to do auto-scaling. Uh, every container will be like the other one. No differences, no nothing. You set the version of the operating system here it says from Alpine 3.7. Uh, Alpine, is, uh, who is new to Docker, Alpine is a Linux distro that's like five megs originally if you don't install anything on it. So it's really fast, it supports basic stuff, you can install Nginx, PHP, MySQL, and most of the software that, you, that we basically need in our daily operations, we can run on it. Uh, with everything set, you will get to, let's say, 160, 170 megabytes of storage used compared to, let's say, CentOS that I personally use or Ubuntu that will go over four or 500 megabytes originally without the packages you will need. 
This also means uh, you will have to install some uh, basic stuff there uh, that are not supported by, by default. Uh, but that means your machine will be exactly configured yep, like you want for the particular application, uh, for a particular version of software that you are using. Uh, the next big thing about Docker is Docker Compose. It basically creates a small network of connected containers that support different applications running inside them, and they are all running as one, like I said, we are, we are building a system that will have hundreds of this. So basically, this is how we will do it. We will just make a comp Docker Compose file differently for different clients, and we will have exactly what we want. We will have different applications set up for different clients and all coming from same, let's say, big code base. Um, Docker Compose is there to even uh, automate more already automated process where uh, in this particular case, let's say I want to install a database and a WordPress. We will see this in a live a little bit later. But I want to install a WordPress, of course, I need a database. Uh, you simply define uh, the name of the image you want to use. Images are coming from Docker Hub. Uh, you have a website on urlhub.docker.com where you can find a bunch of already built images. Image is really something like we have on Vagrant or, or any other system for, for visualizing your uh, software, where it's simply a list of commands that will be done to again have one machine always act in exactly the same way. It's great for development teams, unless you have a lot of people working on Windows, but I will, I will talk about it a little bit later. Um, and here also you can notice on the right column, right near the footer, it says volumes. Um, when I mentioned the volumes that are supported here, it will sh uh, create a volume that will be persistent for this compose. It will not be deleted, when you kill the machine, when you restart the machine, it's always there. While if you uh, destroy a container uh, without volumes, if you use local files only, all the files you used previously will be gone. If you use shared or mounted, um, those data will even remain there until, uh, until you actually delete them from your machine. So you can list volumes in the same way like you can use the list containers or as, as you can list images that are currently installed on your host. Uh, in the same way you can use volumes. So if you explicitly delete the volume, only then the data will be gone. Or of course if you kill the whole host. Um, I already mentioned a few things when it comes to Docker uh, in uh, WordPress development. I also mentioned don't try to run it on Windows. Um, I mean, try it, but there's a great possibility you will have lots and lots of problems and issues that you will just eventually have to say, I give up, because either you will start to work directly with Docker and Windows trying to solve those problems, then I don't think there is another way. I had two developers trying to set up their development environments on Windows. Uh, first problem comes when you try to check out some files that can be solved in Git, but still, when you check out files, uh, it will change how the line ends, and it will pretty much break the whole, whole thing when you try to run such file in a Linux environment. So the thing is, you have everything uh, under version control, including your uh, Docker files, but when you check them out with Windows, win uh, the Git on Windows will automatically change the line endings when it comes to new line. That file will be served 
not to Windows, but to Linux. Because you are running your uh, virtualization software, and that file, that Vagrant file, uh, that uh, Docker file will be given to uh, not Windows, but Linux machine. Uh, you can try fixing it, but then you will get into some other issues and it's a total waste of time. That's one problem. That can be solved if you optimize the Git a little bit. Next big problem is actually uh, sharing the mounted media between your host machine, your vagrant machine, and Docker container. Uh, on Mac, on, on Unix-like systems, that pretty much works out of the box. Uh, so I run a VM on uh, my, my machine. In that VM, I run a Docker container. Whenever I change something in uh, my ID, that change will be replicated all the way to the container. With Windows, that doesn't work. It usually breaks somewhere between communication on uh, VM with container. No particular reason why. No error log, no nothing. Just the change is not propagated all the way down to your container. Way around it is to basically destroy that container and rebuild it again. Um, it's not so time confusing as it's just like, you know, a little bug that's always behind your, on, on top of your head and like, you know, why this doesn't work. Um, so I, I strongly suggest, and I, I uh, even said that, so go with dual boot. If your developers are really, really, really hooked to Windows, unfortunately you will have to make them use Linux and if they want to use Windows uh, on their machine when they are not working on that particular project, by all means they can, but they have to run dual boot on that machine where they, they will run the code from Linux, they will eliminate the need to use the VM and everything works fine. Uh, this is something that I try to play with a little. Uh, not really microservices, but I try to split WordPress into its, let's say, core sections, which is uh, the application server, uh, database, and content. Uh, I use the shared storage for application, and I use the different container to run the database, different <coughs> databases because that this setup was meant to actually support multiple installations of WordPress. So persistent storage is a local mounted one that where I can change it so my teams, uh, my uh, plugins are stored per installation but VP includes or VP admin is always centralized. Uh, one problem that I noticed, but it's not really so big because WordPress does that automatically is when there is an update. That means that first site that catches the update of your WordPress core will update the core for the whole network. Uh, that will just require to run the database update because the database is not shared. It's actually something that, let's say, kind of works. Um, I'm still not so certain I will put this into production. There are still like glitches that can happen from time to time. Uh, and a really good thing about this is uh, the Nginx that's basically a load balancer can also be a container or two containers. Uh, behind it, I can have multiple application servers that will allow me to handle the load uh, very good and in very fast way. Um, originally, I mentioned the speed. So usually, when you take, let's say, Ubuntu, uh, and you run Vagrant up, uh, 
what do you think, how long it takes from the moment you hit enter until the moment you can run Vagrant SSH? Sorry? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Uh, without download, without download. So let's say you have the image cached. How, how much time is needed? 15, 20, depending on uh, your host machine speed and how much resources you dedicate. When you hit enter on Docker run to create a new container, that's been done in a matter of milliseconds. So speed is something that really helps in, 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 this, in this case. Um, yeah, this was the last slide. Uh, so do you have like in theory level just some questions? We will move on to something that I haven't tried before, which is live coding. We will try to uh, get from the moment to for you to run the Vagrant, to install Vagrant, to run Docker on it, set up the nodes and everything. And we will try next, let's say, 20 minutes to have the functional uh, WordPress website running on Docker. So, so we will have some time more questions at the end, but uh, if anybody wants to ask anything right now, just raise your hand. Yes, but the um, OS X from some reason doesn't have that problem. It it runs pretty smoothly most of the times. Again, there are issues, and Linux is the only native. Uh, Windows and uh, OS X will be supported as whole different kind of hosts, where basically the kernel of your system will remain the same, and only the packages will be installed for your uh, for the containers you want. In this particular case, we are basically putting the VM in there, so we always have the same kernel on top where we put our containers for, for application. And running the top in Windows is not a good uh, If you want to run Windows applications inside Docker, that works. If you want to run... Uh, Uh, yeah, it will, it will work. Uh, I know that uh, Docker is really working on, on heavy development where they will allow you basically to run Windows applications in containers, same way as we mostly run Nginx or MySQL. Uh, okay. Uh, so let's, let's try this. Um, so I set up originally uh, some working Sophia folder where uh, I already have a vagrant, just I will kill it just for case. Okay. So uh, the vagrant machine is already set because it will, like someone said, took like 20 minutes to finish everything and that, that's like a little bit way too long. Um, so just like you can start uh, counting time for things like this because you will see that even the shutdown of a VM will take a while. Um, I did a benchmark on, on this machine before preparing this talk and it was like 22 seconds I think to bring machine back from halt state uh, this, this particular machine. Well, you will see, we will see as, as I type commands that it's pretty much instantly when you hint, hit enter uh, on Docker run. Okay, I guess something is not really okay here because it takes seriously a long time. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, it goes instantly. Uh, and it will show you the hash of the container that was created and milliseconds later you can check the listing of your running containers and if everything went okay uh, you can see your container already running. Okay. 
So we have, so the, the one, the, the version I was using here, just if someone wants for the notes or something, the command I used to run is vagrant and it minimum of Ubuntu trusty. using here and one thing I did instantly was to change the vagrant file when it comes to networking so config VM network private network and I dedicated an IP to 192.168 uh, 24th of November which is today date basically uh, also uh, I have put the same thing in my host file, so I have workcamp.sophia as a domain that we'll see later how, how it all works. Uh, also what I suggest, especially when you're trying to test things, never let your vagrant machine take as much resources because it will kill your, your host machine, eventually, sooner or later, but one time you will definitely do that. So. One of the things I always do is I change the virtual box memory to take maximum of two gigs. For what I've been working on, it's more than enough if you really don't want to run some memory expensive processes where, where of course, um, you can dedicate more. And since the WordPress itself is not so CPU hungry system, uh, I don't limit the CPU, but in certain situations, I will put a limit there also. And I would say that it can take max of two cores. So even if there is a problem, if there is a memory leak in my script, it will never actually kill my machine, but I can kill that. Um, either that container or either that, uh, that whole virtual machine and start from the beginning. Uh, okay, so if someone wants to put the stopwatch on, Vagrant up is running right now, and it will take a while before we see the output and before we were able to log in. Uh, is uh, this font size good? I need to make it larger. So yeah, okay. Um, okay. So, we are ready to go on, which is Vagrant SSH, of course, and we are in. Um, you can see that the IP address is as I defined it, and I really always do that. It's a matter of, of choice. I don't like for port forwarding or something like that. I like to have like a dedicated IP for, for machine I'm working on. Um, okay, so next thing is first how, or actually just a Docker, a list of all commands that Docker supports, uh, really a lot of them, and I will only use few of this today, but it's like something you, you can read and see yourself, what, what there is that you can do. Uh, one thing who's really interested and not previously worked with Docker, uh, I suggest that you check Docker Swarm, uh, which is a Docker solution that's multi-host. It will allow you to run Docker containers across different machines. Uh, it's something that's inevitable that you will not always be capable of vertically scaling your machine. There will be a cap at one point, so you will have to start horizontally scaling your uh, hardware setup. So mm, Docker Swarm will actually allow you to do that. Um, so let's see what, sorry. Docker container. 
containers are we running right now? Um, first command docker ps will give you only the running ones. Uh, the docker ps minus a, which is actually short from uh, ps all, will give you the list of all possible containers currently defined on your system. So since I want to go from the beginning to show you how long it takes to create the actual container, not just restart it, I will delete both of this. So for docker, rm, or remove, I can use uh, either container ID, which is here in the left column, or a name, which is all the way in the right column. Docker remove MySQL. As a result, you will receive the name of the container that was, or containers that were deleted. And let's say now I want to run, yeah. and if you go here, of course, uh, vc.sof is redirected to the domain we had, to IP address we mentioned before. So there is nothing, nothing here. Let's say Docker run, um, we will give it a name to this, let's say it's nginx, and we will uh, set a volume between the host machine and the Docker container, let's say this from the, local, from the host machine will actually be uh, user share nginx share share nginx html uh, this is the default path where the nginx root will be set we want to run it as a diamond and the last part is which image to use that's it that's how long it takes to create a container compared to those 15-20 seconds we had before uh, this was pretty instantly and as you can see it only took like a couple of seconds to type it but it's already up and running for 5 seconds and now let's see here and nothing will be there the reason for this is uh, remember this part ports 80 so this uh, the, this container will use port 80 but your host doesn't know or you didn't tell your host what what to do with it so again we will remove this okay it's running so people just ask to force it and instead of just doing this before we set it to diamond we'll say okay but forward port 80 on the host machine to port 80 on this container again matter of seconds it's running and now this is the big difference any IP on port 80 will be redirected to port 80 on this container if we go back hello we can stop here the way how uh, and also now if I want uh, to change this file I will go on my local machine to this path and I will change the index HTML file This is something that will actually, or possibly not really work in Windows. So this change will require you to change the whole, to, to uh, recreate again the container so it, will, it can be created with a different code base originally there. 
So when we got to this, um, this is just the Nginx, so we can go from here and start to build our own machine, but that maybe doesn't make sense. So this is uh, the official repository on Docker Hub for Nginx. We have the same thing for MySQL, so let's set that one up and we'll get to a point where we will make a connection between our third container and uh, MySQL container. So again, we have same thing as before. We want to create name MySQL. We want that volume to go to this is again default path, so if you do not use any kind of customizations during setup, you can just use the default path and expect they will be there. Again, we need to set the port. And uh, we Docker also supports uh, environment variables, which in this case will be you variable for MySQL root password. And let's say that the field. Again, go in the background and use MySQL, but if you check here, uh, supported tags and Docker file links. Uh, if we go with just MySQL, it will automatically set up password MySQL 8. We don't want that, so we will use the latest 5 version of MySQL where we can use just tag 5. We don't have to put 5.7 or something like that. And this is the reason why I'm putting 5 here. And again, since I already had these images uh, downloaded on my machine prior to this talk, everything is instantly. Even if the image is not there, it will just take a couple of, let's say, seconds to download. But just in case, I, I want to be certain if the Wi-Fi goes off, that I have all those running locally. Uh, now, if I again check what's been running, there it is, 28 seconds ago and running for 27. And again, it's forwarding the port 3306 to 3306 on the container. So we are certain that uh, everything we do with the database will actually be there. Um, another way how we can test that is I have already set a connection, uh, but I can just do it again. VC Sophia, uh, we are running, we are connecting over the SSH, so we need to open the SSH tunnel to our machine to connect it. Username Vagrant, of course, password is so 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 hard. Vagrant again. Um, Post root, we set the password here, so we can use that password, and we can simply connect to our machine. Of course, there are no databases, but if we try to add uh, WordPress, it should actually work. Yeah, it's there. So we can set any table, just to make sure data are really going in. Yeah, it's there. Um, okay, um, so we set up the Nginx, we set up the MySQL, but in order to avoid setting the PHP and writing the, all the, the, the commands that we need to set up the Docker file for our WordPress, we will simply go again on Docker Hub and for WordPress, which will give us uh, all the tags and configurations that are supported for, for this particular case. Uh, so yeah, we'll just go with the latest, no need to do anything else. And we will simply do that again running Docker run, um, let's see, WordPress. Um, just 
So name WordPress link. This is a new thing that we haven't used before. Remember when I said that Docker supports networking if you are using Docker Compose? Well, since we are not using Docker Compose here, we need to tell Docker where to create the link between our, our containers. So in this case, we will say create link to our MySQL uh, container name MySQL running MySQL. Again, and actually here, let's put in the name where Sophia, and here we have WordPress. Sorry, I don't know all the exact options, that's why I'm checking the official repository. Okay. Um, this is what happens when it can't find the installation locally. It will try to download. It will take a while, but since our internet is not so bad, this will be really fast. <coughs> As soon as it is done, it's saying that it's up and running. Again, let's check what containers we have now. And there it is. But now we have a problem. We can't connect our WordPress to port 80 because we already have another Nginx running. So this is one limitation. You can't use, of course, same port multiple times. You need to be careful with that. If there are some problems, most always check PS or always check even this can be a problem always use all and see everything that's going that's that's been running out there so let's again remove nginx we do not really need it again it's running so let's force it we definitely don't want to have it there and now we are here, but now we have to also delete the WordPress again and recreate it because we didn't do the port forwarding originally. So again, we will just simply delete the Sophia one and we will see Docker. basically takes just a few, few minutes to get um, from and only two commands to get your first WordPress uh, installation running in Docker. Uh, if we still have time, uh, I can show you also if you're interested how to use Docker Compose where we can narrow this down to only one command and one configuration file if you're interested into that. Yeah. Or you just want to go and have a coffee. <laughs> oh, 
okay, who wants to go have a coffee? They can have a coffee. I will make a short break to get this removed and uh, to get going with config file. And as you can tell, I'm usually using the Docker Compose, that's why I'm having so much issues running all this. Um, okay, and now I will just switch completely to root here. Uh, it might be easier because I want to do something like... If you're uh, working daily with um, PHP uh, Composer, I have a lot of problems always adding that R to the end, which kind of gets annoying when you figure out you just spent 15-20 minutes trying to debug what's wrong, and then you figure out you just have one R extra. So, in this particular case, we need to define a version. Uh, this is because Docker is out there for, I think, three or four years now. Uh, but it, it's already, Docker Compose is already in version three because they, they are really working on heavy development and making new features and making it better day, day by day. Um, so, here we need to define. Oh, sorry, just one thing I noticed. Um, it's not XML, but... Uh, <coughs> yeah. Sorry about that. So, let's go back to our version, which is 3.3. And now we define services that we need to run um, our Docker Compose WordPress. First, we need our database. And our database will come from image, as we saw before, MySQL 5. Um, then we want to use a volume, which will be um, again to the same place. Restart always. So in case uh, the node gets, the container gets destroyed or, or goes down, it will automatically go back with this command. Like Docker keeps track about that. Uh, and now we will see Environment. This is that E argument that uh, that we used, and we will say MySQL 